Hi, this is Mariah Gillow from The Hollywood Reporter, and we're in studio today with Eliza Scanlon from Sharp Objects. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Eliza. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank I'm you. good. Um, I am reeling from Sharp Objects. What an amazing series. I know. Um, it's very impressive. Uh, this is kind of your first first major role. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty insane that... Um, for my one of my first roles, it's it's this and it's this dark, <laughs> but um, yeah, the reception's been awesome. Everyone seems to be really loving it and really getting into it. And um, yeah, yeah, like you said, after every episode, people just have to yeah take a breather, just kind of collect themselves. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty dark. You have your character Emma is having a moment on the internet. <laughs> really? Um, yes. <laughs> there have been so many articles written about her and yeah. about your performance. And one of the things that they're comparing you to is Joffrey from Game of Thrones oh. as like an, an ultimate bad team. Oh my god. <laughs> how does it feel to be how does it feel to be compared to Joffrey from um, Game of Thrones? <laughs> it's uh, insane. Um, you know, it's it's weird that people are even talking about me on the internet. Um, <laughs> like six months ago it was pretty anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the whole thing is just weird. I mean, last year I I was shooting the show and I had just, you know, come out of school and um, it's just been such a new experience for me this this past year. So I feel like every day I have to <laughs> have to pinch myself. Something yeah. new and weird happens literally every day and I don't know. Ev yeah. It's strange. Mm -hmm. It's strange, and um, I'm very humbled by the by yeah. the whole the whole thing. Tell me about the process of creating the character of Emma, because you had um, the book, you know, the as material source mm -hmm. material. Yeah. But then you were also working, you know, with the director, and you know, what what was it like to kind of create that character? Was um, just tell me the process. Yeah, it was it was actually really quite an independent process. I didn't mm -hmm. really get a lot of advice from. Yeah. Um, Gillian, which I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Um, she really just sort of handed me the reins and, and let me explore myself, which I found really scary at first, but um, in the end it was really freeing. I think mm. you can go so many different ways with Emma as a character. Um, she's just so multifaceted that yeah. in a way, if, if you were to kind of pigeonhole her into one sort of direction, I think it would limit her as a character. And yeah, I, I actually had this, this scrapbook, I guess, that I used um, to write about the character. And mm -hmm. um, she's really interested in a lot of historical figures. So I, I did a bit of research, like mm -hmm. Joan of Arc. Um, so I wrote a lot about that and I stuck that all in and um, if there were ever scenes that I needed fleshing out with and I mean a lot of the scenes are really confusing like Amma is just so um, enigmatic as a character so mm -hmm. whenever there was something I was like I don't really know why Amma's doing that why mm -hmm. does she have to be so mean I'd sort of write it down and try and justify her actions and and what she was doing so yeah I think I'm at the time, I was just as confused as everyone else is by Emma. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's, you know, she doesn't have multiple personality disorders, but she has to be so many different people for so many different yeah. people in order to, you know, maneuver within exactly. the world that she's, you know, has, she's created for herself or has been created for exactly. her. Your two main scene partners are Patricia Clarkson and Amy Adams. And with both of them, you have to be two different people. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Tell me about the process of, you know, meeting Amy and Patricia for the first time and then kind of cr creating this, these characters. Meeting Patricia and Amy for the first time was um, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, they're both people that I, I really look up to as um, artists and, and people in general. But I think what made performing with them so great was that we we already had a relationship mm -hmm. beforehand and um, by the end of the shoot we developed something that was I, th I think really special and we all felt really close with one another. And like you said, yeah, a lot of people, they kind of see the duality of Anna and they, it's easy to see it as good girl and bad girl, but 
Yeah, I, I really see it as it's two different versions of truth and mm -hmm. everyone's identity is multifaceted and, and depending mm -hmm. on the person we're communicating with, we, we highlight one aspect yeah. to, to suit the situation. And I guess that's what AMA is doing constantly, but in a more extreme sense because, mm -hmm. you know, the the stakes have been heightened. You know, there's two dead girls and there's a killer on the loose. So I guess developing those uh, relationships uh, came with the development of our real relationships as people. Um, they both have a very maternal quality to, um, to them and they always made it their priority to make me feel really comfortable. I guess at its core, Camille and Adora, they want to take care of Amma, mm -hmm. um, but they just have different ways of going about it. Right. Um, yeah, it was absolutely incredible working with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how does it feel? I mean, one of the things that's said about your character is that she's creepy. Like, what is it like yeah. to play creepy? <laughs> I, I didn't really see myself as creepy, but now <laughs> I'm saying it, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go with it. Um, in the first few episodes, people were yeah, like, something's not right. Yeah, she's actually pretty creepy there. I'll admit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think it's her, I guess her way of navigating the, the situation. And she's like, I don't know, the way I saw it, so much of Amma is about the way she moves. And um, I found focusing on that and, and the way she moves through situations really interesting. She's mm -hmm. kind of like a snake. I don't mm -hmm. know, that's how I yeah. see it. Um, she's always navigating herself in and out of situations without reaping the consequences. Um, but yeah, I think it's really funny um, at first seeing uh, Camille so thrown off by Amma. She's very much a, an enigma to Camille in the beginning and, um, and to the audience as well because the show is, um, I guess you progress through this story in a way uh, that's not really the typical way that we, mm. we see a story. It's, um, we're not given the, the juicy stuff straight away. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're used to that, especially with, um, you know, all the TV out there that you can binge watch now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess, yeah, I, I think it's nice that, especially the, the bigger plot points, they, they're given slowly, like mm -hmm. Camille's cutting, you only really notice that um, fully until you get to the later episodes and mm. that's when you actually really see the, the extent of the, the damage. and and the trauma, um, and I guess that's also reflective of mental illness in a way. Um, you don't really see it on surface level. Um, a lot of the time you don't see that someone is suffering. Um, and yeah, as you as you progress through the story, um, it, it's, it kind of mirrors that, um, that opening up, I guess, when when you when you look into the mind of someone who is going through something traumatic or they're, they're suffering from a mental illness, um, it's just a nice parallel, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's repeated a lot within within the actual uh, series that the story is about dead girls, mm -hmm. and some women may be uncomfortable with that subject matter. But then we're looking at a cast that's all women, and it's about the, the women who are alive and living within within the plot. Mm -hmm. So how do sharp objects like kind of ride that line of making you uncomfortable, but also, you know, getting amazing performances out of actresses? Mm. Um, yeah, that kind of um, dead girl stereotype has been used. Uh, quite a lot of the years and I guess as as we see the story unfold it becomes less about the dead girls and more about um, Camille and, mm -hmm. and and dealing with her own demons and and I, I guess it in a way refuses to fall into the stereotype mm -hmm. um, and that's what I love about it it's it's about something um, deeper and um, more uh, internal than anything. I don't know, it's just weird. It's the the whole dead girl thing. I, I don't really see too much of it in the show. I, I really think it's the about the rise and, and fall of Camille Preka and, mm -hmm. um, and and everyone else around her. And and in the end, that's what people want to watch. They want to, they want to see relationships unfold and mm -hmm. on screen. And yeah, I, I think that people really relate to the show in that way. Mm -hmm. 
How are your roller skating skills? They're amazing. <laughs> I actually went to a roller skating camp you a few did. months ago because, I don't know, it was just really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and it was with this roller skating company called Moxie Roller Skates. Uh -huh. um, shout out to Moxie. <laughs> um, and it was insane. I, I roller skated on ramps, I roller skated down hills into foam pits, and it was so fun. Wow. Uh, and I recommend everyone should try it at least <laughs> once in their life. But yeah, I had a lot of lessons, and there were a lot of long nights roller skating. Um, there was one night where I, I stacked it pretty hard. <laughs> it was 3 a.m. in the morning, and I had the flu, and that's kind of where we ended that night because it was a pretty big fall. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I love it. I, 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 I'm pretty proud of uh, what, I, what I achieved. I really <laughs> appreciate that touch that, you know, that these are teens from kind of a, like they're in a different time period yeah. because of the small town that they're yeah. in. Yeah. So they're on roller skates, not roller blades or skateboards. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to say congratulations on being cast in Little Women. Thank you. That's Thank you very, very much. exciting. Uh, we had Greta Gerwig here when she was uh, doing the rounds for Lady Bird, and she is an amazing director. Are you excited to be working with her? Oh my her? gosh, I'm I'm a huge fan of Greta Gerwig. So, I mean, meeting her and and being in the room with her and auditioning with her was a blessing in itself. So actually getting the role is is really quite uh, an achievement and I'm really, really humbled um, about the offer and I'm, I'm so excited to get started. And this cast, Meryl Streep, Emma Stone, Saoirse Ronan, Timothy Chalamet, and Florence Pugh. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Are you super excited to be working with these people? I'm, I'm very excited. I, I think it's not going to be real until it is. I, I don't, it's, it hasn't processed right. in my head, but I mean, I, I'm really excited to just get onto set and, um, and get started. Uh, but it's, yeah, I feel like my life just gets crazier by the, by the <laughs> minute. It's really quite incredible, yeah. I mean, if I were you, I'd be thinking about like some small talk that you could throw out to Meryl what, what do you even say? I don't know. Do you like dogs? <laughs> like, do you like dogs? Perfect. Everyone likes dogs, that's so great. that's it's a good, good that's place a good, to start. Good opener. Yeah. <laughs> um, will you be watching the past versions of Little Women? I have seen the um, Winona Ryder one, mm -hmm. but I haven't actually seen anything else, and yeah. I've just gone and started on the book. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of my friends are huge fans, and I mean, it's nice. I think, I think Greta is kind of revolutionary and um, her filmmaking style is really unique and I'm really excited to see what she she's going to do with it and, and how she's going to approach the characters um, because I, I, I've got a feeling she's got some new ideas about how it's going to be adapted so yes yeah. I see a lot of new ideas coming forward with yeah that definitely collection of creatives coming yeah together. yeah for sure yeah we have a thing that we do on at the Hollywood Reporter called First Best, Last Worst. So uh -huh. I'm going to ask you four <laughs> questions. What was the first film performance that really impressed you? Ooh. Um, oh, that's a hard one. Uh, probably Silence of the Lambs. Um, it always does it for me. Yeah. Um, Jodie Foster is pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the best day on set of Sharp Objects? What was your best day on set? Oh, man, there were so many good days. <laughs> um, probably the day where Amy and I, we were just in a mood for singing, and we, like, whipped out Spotify and literally played every song that we knew word for word to, and one of them included uh, Eminem's song Without Me, uh -huh. and Amy and I were just... <laughs> rap battling it out and it was really fun and obviously she's really good at musical theater so she was like yeah. doing the whole Moana thing and um, we were just sitting there listening like sing more Amy <laughs> free concert yeah yeah it was really good yeah <laughs> we sung a lot on set <laughs> <laughs> what was the last piece of acting advice that really stuck with you hmm. um, I did a course recently um, with Steppenwolf Theater Company mm. We were studying the Meisner technique. Um, and probably the main thing I got out of that was part of my French 
fuck being polite. Um, <laughs> and I think Australians do so much of that. We're, we're so cautious about saying the right thing and doing the right thing. And, and you just can't afford to do that when you're mm. on the stage and when you're acting. Um, so yeah, it's about just following your impulses and no impulse is a bad impulse. You just have to follow through with it. And mm. if you get rejected, then you get rejected and it's fine. And um, yeah, it was, you know, one of the most life-changing courses I've ever done. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. Be more open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the most important thing about acting, I yeah. think. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, do you have a worst audition story? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was... I was in my final year of high school, and this was before I decided to take a break um, to just study. Um, and this was probably the, the reason why I decided to take a break, because I walked into that audition, um, I think it was for Pacific Rim, number mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. and I thought I had the lines down, mm -hmm. but it must have been with all of the other study I was doing and trying to remember that combined with trying to learn the lines I just I didn't know them and mm. I walked in and kept on apologizing that's probably the worst thing you can do in an audition <laughs> is to keep saying sorry yeah. um so yeah that's my 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 worst audition ever I just kept apologizing until I got out and I burst into tears and that was that was the end of it and I didn't audition for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I have a feeling that's your last worst audition story. <laughs> oh, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Eliza, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. The show is Sharp Objects on HBO.